Hello everyone, I am audible to you. Give your response. Yes, I am audible to you. Yeah, yes, how many are there? At least 10 today in the classroom. Yeah, we'll continue. Not, not, an, not an issue. Welcome to Venkarna English Guru. We were talking about Victor and Whitehead. Uh, we were actually, we, we stopped in the middle of Charles Dickens' uh, uh, introduction. So, we'll be talking about... So, Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens, the moment you talk about Charles Dickens, he is considered to be the one of the greatest uh, writers of the Victorian period and his age 1812 and 1870. Next, he was a popular Victorian novelist and the representative writer of Victorian period and he was a popular social critic. His novels usually make comment on the society and the reforms, social and cultural religious reforms of the uh, Victorian England. He created some of the world's best uh, fictional characters like Little Nell. David Copperfield, Havish, Mrs. Havisham, like there are Huria Heap, very popular characters. The, based on this character, there, will, there were plenty of bits based on this. Next, he is considered to be the greatest novel of Victorian period. When we talk about writers, novelists like Charles Dickens, Rebim Thackeray, and Thomas Hardy, Oscar Wilde, Charlotte Bronte, Anne Bronte, Emily Bronte, George Eliot, Sam, and uh, Elizabeth Gaskell, Samuel Butler, based on all these writers, the greatest one is and Charles Dickens. And he is also considered to be literary colossal of his. The greatest writer during this Victorian period is Charles Dickens. Next, uh, yes, and uh, he left school at a very young age, at the age of 11, where he had to work 10 hours a day and during his childhood. Next, uh, with regard to his uh, parents and all, once you, we need to observe, he was born on, and he was born on 7th February and 1812 and the second of eight and he was the second son. Okay, next eight children Dickens and parents named John Dickens, Elizabeth Dickens. In, next. Next, his father was a menial clerk and working at the Navy pay office. Next, during his childhood, he was greatly influenced by picaresque novelists like Daniel Defoe, Tommy Smollett, and uh, Henry Fielding, Samuel Richardson, like plenty of writers, they influenced uh, and the mindset of uh, Charles Dickens. Hence, he also wrote some novels that are examples for picaresque novels, and mainly Tommy Smollett, Henry Fielding, and Robinson Crusoe, and he widely read Arabian Nights and uh, Elizabeth, uh, Farces of Elizabeth Inchbald. Next, uh, he commonly uses his personal experiences, what he, he was actually exposed to during his childhood, he uses those experiences in terms of writing. Next, next Dickens, to pay for his board and to help his family, Dickens worked in Warren's uh, blacking warehouse 10 hours a day. Uh, to support his family because as his father was arrested in a debt and he was put under bars and they, his family and had to work, forced to work and they had to earn some money so that in order to pay debts. Next. Next you can see. Okay, this is over, right? Next, when we talk about despite, next, yes. He did not have wonderful education in his life. Though he did not have good education, formal education, he was able to write 15 novels, my friends. 15 novels. And he, as a writer, composed 15 novels and 5 novelas. Novela, short, shorter than novel and longer than short story. Longer than essay. That is nothing but novela. Okay, next, 
not as complex as a novel. No novella is not as complex as a novel. Novel includes more than 100 characters. Novella can be 5 to 10 or 20 or 30 like below. Limited period of characters, limited period of scenes, settings become a part of uh, no, uh, novella. But novel which includes, which can be more than 100, 200, 300, 500 characters and 500 pages like. Next, and hundreds of short stories and non-fiction articles that, that were composed by Charles Dickens. And what were his novels and novellas and essays? His novels were based on children's rights children education, right to free and compulsory education because in those days children did not have right to free and compulsory education and for that he composed next other social reforms. Next is his success began with his publication of second novel Pickwick Papers and as I told you most of the novels composed by Charles Dickens and published in the form of monthly magazine monthly installments or weekly installments you can see and he used humor satire keen observations of character and society and his novels were published in terms of monthly magazine monthly installments weekly installments in terms of serials very important my friends who published his novels in the form of serials in month and weekly and Charles Dickens a very important uh, character Next, with regard to themes, when we talk about, with regard to the themes and the style that uh, has been used by Charles Dickens, what kind of theme has been used? Oliver Twist and Great Expectations, these are going to be the uh, images of early Victorian London. It means in London, London and it not only exposed in terms of, not only became a symbol for the world, in terms of science and technology, in terms of uh, education, in terms of health, in terms of many things. But also, it also, be, and uh, his writings, these two novels, Oliver Twist and Great Expectations, and helped uh, readers, viewers to understand, it also included the quotes, Roberts, Bandicoots, okay, and juveniles, children, and child thieves. And uh, they are also popular as part of this London that became uh, this is understood after reading these novels. Next, that's what these two novels are we clearly talk about the clear picture of uh, London. Next is novel A Tale of Two Cities, where he talks about and the two cities are considered to be Paris and London. Okay, and this is historical novel. It, it deals with French Revolution, how people, common people, revolted against the French rulers and how they killed all the family members and entire dynasty the aristocratic dynasty that is what the story of a tale of two cities historical novel very wonderful novel based on uh, french revolution next is novels and were praised by these writers leo tolstoy and george orwell gk chester and chesterton but his novels were ridiculed and uh, uh, criticized by oscar wilde henry james Virginia Woolf because of three important things because his novels do not include his novels have loose loose writing the, because as he composes his novels in the form of serial sometimes there is no integrity in terms of every chapters because of that they made comment and at the same time his novels did not have psychological lack of psychological depth there is no psychological kind of relationships among the after reading the novel you are not psychologically influenced by the novel that is what said by henry james where he made another statement his novels are loose baggy monsters novels are loose baggy monsters according to henry james who made a very rash criticism against Charles Dickens. Next, there is no sentimentalism and there is there is only saturated sentimentalism, he says. Same kind of sentiment, all the time he talks about child labor and children rights and uh, right to free education and uh, these social reforms, domestic things that are to be brought, these things that he actually talks about. And at the same time, and people coined under the term Dickensian. Dickensian, which is nothing but the process of talking about poor social conditions and comically repulsive characters. Dickensian, which means you are just like a Dickens, Dickensian kind of character, which means you always talk about poor social conditions. 
okay and uh, comically repulsive characters comical repulsive character kind of characters that are discussed in terms of the word dickensian hungerford states yes he uh, during his childhood he worked in a railway station where he used to get 6 shillings per week 6 paisa like that next and uh, what is the impact what is the impact impact on charles dickens to become a wonderful writer because working at the railway station at the charing cross next strenuous and often hard working conditions where he worked in the warren's workhouse and the conditions of his father conditions of his family socio economic and labor conditions of england during 1850 1840 influenced charles dickens to be a social novelist a realistic novelist in 1830 dickens met his first love maria bidnell she becomes a part of uh, the novel uh, david copperfield and he uh, she did not accept his love and hence uh, uh, he was not able to marry her and he had close friendship with uh, a few gothic novelist like william godwin william beckford and radcliffe matthew gregory lewis he also composed two gothic novels my friends the great expectations and blake house these two are considered to be popular gothic novels composed by charles dickens okay examples for like that you will get which of the following is a gothic novel composed by charles dickens which of the following is a historical novel composed by charles dickens a tale of two cities hard times historical gothic great expectations blake house gothic novel social novels all are social novels next we been talking about the word bows bows is going to be his pen name but as Moses it is actually one of the characters it was used in the novel Vicar of Wakefield composed by Oliver Goldsmith and this character this char- the title of this character was used as a pen name for a few years next later uh, later this bows instead of saying bows and people used to say bowses and this became bows so what is the pen name of Charles Dickens bows several times this featured in you in the history of ugc net nta examination remember next oliver twist oliver twist oliver twist where we can understand that child as the protagonist child became oliver became and based on a small character like child and this is this was the first novel and in which child became the protagonist for the first time in the history of english novel next next dickens married catherine thompson hogarth his his wife name and and she was the uh, daughter of the george hogarth who was a popular editor of the evening chronicle next uh, dickens novels were works of social commentary yes very important and he usually makes comment on society poverty social stratification because he indirectly makes comment on the poor law act, act 1833 the first reform bill 1832 second reform bill 1837 most of his novels were composed before 1850 and he to- he makes comment on the victorian parliament victorian government because of certain aspects next you can see another novel popular novel composed by charles dickens a christmas carol which usually talks about the joys of celebrating christmas in britain and america you know and leo tolstoy and frieder dostoevsky they referred this christmas carol as the greatest christian writer for writing this a christmas carol next you can see next and he suffered stroke and he died of heart attack next uh, characters are very important my friends usually in the examination they will ask a lot of questions on characters huria ipe is a character from samuel pickwick is a character from mr mcaver is a character from next mrs havisham is a character from fagin is a character in pip is a character created by like that he will there were plenty of bits in the history of uh, nta net and several examinations my friends next uh, and he also created 
Mrs. Nickleby and she, and this character was and uh, his mother only and Mr. Micawber and his father. Okay, he, some of the sometimes this these writers create their own parents' characters, their friends in terms of characters. Next, another important concept is autobiographical elements. Very important thing is that David Copperfield is going to be, he is considered to be the autobiographical novel written by uh, Charles Dickens in 1850. Very important novel this is. And the rest we don't find, but he uses the process of going to the pre, uh, prison and uh, as he was a clerk in the court and the scenes that he presents, maybe those are autobiographical elements. The working condition that he actually talks about, again autobiographical in nature in different novels, but only one novel that talks about uh, autobiographical, David Copperfield, 1850. David Copperfield is autobiographical novel and uh, some of the arguments in Blake House reflect Dickens' experience as a law clerk. Dickens worked as a law clerk in his life. Next, Dickens' father was sent to prison for debt and this becomes a feature in most of the novels. Next, uh, and uh, Lucy and there are plenty, little Emily becomes a part of David Copperfield and uh, Lucy Manet, some of the characters that he uses they become a part of the autobiographical elements of Charles Dickens. This novel, which becomes a part of some of the examination, hence the Oliver and Oliver Twist, this is the second novel, and Shaw could read its, the, its images of poverty and crime. People for the first time understood, oh, there is a lot of crime in London. There are a lot of children, thieves, decoits, robbers in London. Okay, apart from many luxuries. Next, it challenged middle class and polemics about the criminals. It changed the mindset of the people. How these criminals come uh, and become popular in the society. And uh, next, it turns out that lost nephew, this is the short summary uh, that you can read so that you can understand. Next, Leo Tolstoy, G.K. Chesterton and George Orwell praised because of his realism, socialism, communist kind of ideas and fluency, genius of satiric caricature, mainly with regard to working on behalf of children and the, and the downtrodden communities. Next, William Wordsworth, William Wordsworth criticized like Oscar Wilde and Henry James and other people. He also criticized, Virginia Woolf criticized him in the same way uh, Charles Dickens criticized, Charles and uh, sorry, Wordsworth criticized Words, and Wordsworth uh, made a statement, he was very talkative, vulgar young man. In written and uh, Charles Dickens called Wordsworth a dreadful old ass, you are just like an ass, you are not there to do anything for the people, simply sitting as a poet laureate, he made the statement, Charles Dickens criticized Wordsworth by, with this phrase. Next, Henry James, and as I told you, he considered his novels as loose baggy monsters. Your novels are not going to do anything else. They are just like loose baggy monster. They appear very kind of, uh, the feature like monster, but there is nothing at all. Okay, this is the, this is, this is the statement made by Betrayed Cavalier Organization. Virginia Woolf also made another comment against him. Next, what are the popular novels composed by Charles Dickens? I said this quotation, V. Ponabam D. D. B. H. Lagoyam. Remember this. And this becomes a feature of many kind of examination. B. Ponabam D. D. B. H. Lagoyam. B. Sketch of Bows. P. Pickwick Papers. Oliver Twist. Nicholas Nickleby. Old Curiosity Shop. Balabi B. Raj. A Christmas Carol. Martin Chekalwit. Dom Benson. David Copperfield. Blake House. Hard Times. Little Doriot and uh, A Tale of Two Cities, Great Expectations, Our Mutual Friend and The Mysteries of Edwin Root. This last one, the incomplete novel, simple one called B. Ponabam DDBH Lagoyam. Have that, Mysteries of Edwin Root and Our Mutual Friend, Great Expectations, A Tale of Two Cities, Little Doriot, Hard Times, Blake House, David Copperfield, Dombey and Son, Martin Chagalwit, A Christmas Carol, Barnaby B. Rich, and 
ओल्ड क्यूरियसिटी शॉप निकोलस निकल बी एंड ऑलिवर ट्रेस्ट पिक विक पेपर्स एंड स्केच्स ऑफ बोल्स इफ यू रिपीट कपल ऑफ टाइम्स यू विल गेट दिस इजीली इट टेक्स जस्ट फॉर वन आर यू नीड टू रीड ओके एंड यू नीड टू रिमेंबर वट द फर्स्ट नॉवल एंड दैट्स इट वट द फर्स्ट नॉवल एंड ऑलिवर ट्रेस्ट and uh, some more novels like uh, dom benson autobiographical novel david copperfield black black house black house hard times it has a subtitle for these times and little dory a tale of two cities historical novel great expectations and gothic novel our mutual friend the mistress of edwin root last unfinished novel by charles dickens okay remember this don't forget next we'll go back to another important writer john ruskin very important one before we talk about this let me tell you a few bits who influenced gandhi repeated bit in the history of dsc tet net set examinations john ruskin which book of john ruskin influenced leo tolstoy karl marx gandhi nelson mandela again john ruskins unto this lost what is the and uh, john ruskin was dash poet dramatist essayist novelist only essayist remember only essayist who introduced who introduced the technique pathetic fallacy which is also called personification again john ruskin attributing human qualities to non living things this is termed as pathetic fallacy or personification or prosopopoeia coined by john ruskin remember my friends repeatedly the what is the first collection of essays composed by john ruskin the modern painters these are common repeated a bit bits with regard to john ruskin remember john ruskin and affluent he was very rich we need to understand and uh, a social position in it and he was equally unconventional he was a strong supporter of turner it's a, and the landscape uh, painter he was a turner a painter his first longest book the modern pointers no painters the modern painters and and uh, which is closed in 1860 ruskin's ideas upon art and life what is this book about the modern painters it's all about art and life what is the connection between art and life he died in the lake district he is also from lake district there may be a bit who of the following is a lake district writer lake school writer from victorian period john ruskin remember who are the three victorian uh, sorry three uh romantic lake school writers wcs words with called rishute like that you need to remember next what are the popular works composed by john ruskin very simple the seven lamps of uh, architecture the seven lamps of uh, architecture next uh, the two paths and unto this last very important my friends unto this last this is composed in four sections four sections next the crown of wild olive these are some of the works remember the modern painters unto this lost two very important one the rest are not required unto this lost is very important where he talks about civil disobedience non violence a lot of political issues he used and he delivered a number of lectures very composed in the form of this theory political views and this influenced karl marx leo tolstoy vladimir lenin and particular uh, gandhi remember all that next and you also coined the term pathetic fallacy as i told you pathetic fallacy refers to a figure figurative expression figures of speech figures of thought i can say pathetic fallacy refers to figures of thought which refers to attributing human qualities to non living things attributing for example my motherland is welcoming me i am attributing him who will welcome people but i am i am narrate i am attributing associating this this welcoming with non living things the trees are dancing in the garden usually people dance but i say trees are dancing the smiles are smiling at me usually people smile it but i can say the trees are smiling at me the flowers are smiling at me the old field is sad usually people are sad but i can say the board is sad the lights are sad or pen is sad all these are pathetic fallacies examples for pathetic fallacy so attributing human qualities to non and attributing and 
attributing human qualities to non-living things. Endowing human feelings, human emotions to non-living things is nothing but pathetic fallacy. This is also called personification. Personification, pathetic fallacy, prosopopoeia. Very important, my friends. Enough. See, here one small example. Nature must be gladsome when I was so happy. Nature must be gladsome. No, we are actually attributing gladsome to nature. Nature, because this is inanimate object, we are attributing gladsome to nature, which is pathetic fallacy. Next, what are the features of the writings composed by John Ruskin? The enormous sentence rolling along like a torrent, the cunning use of semicolons and strong rhythm and loveliness of epithet uses some kind of quotations, one line proverbs. Epithets are nothing but proverbs, remember. Next, descriptive writing, it has all care and poetical effect and its diction suggestive like Bible, he uses the words, phrases as if uh, the words used in the Bible. Next, that's it with regard to John Ruskin. Subscribe to our YouTube channel Venkarna English Guru. Don't forget about it and inform your friends too. Next, we'll be talk I think uh, with regard to William Hazlitt, we discussed as part of our uh, uh, romantic period because he, fe he becomes a part of uh, romanticism. I think we discussed there. I don't know whether we discussed or not, but let me repeat for a couple of minutes. William and William Hazlitt, 1778 and 1830, he was a romantic writer, not to be discussed as part of Victorian, but anyhow, uh, we will talk, uh, we'll talk something about him. Next, he was a philosopher, social commentator and literary critic, very important, this is literary critic. And he was placed in the company of Samuel Johnson, George Orwell. And he is compared to Samuel Johnson and George Orwell. Samuel Johnson, a wonderful art critic. And George Orwell, social critic. Okay. And he is combined with these two qualities. And he is considered to be the finest art critic of his age. He was the one important writer who criticizes, who, talk, who evaluates art. Next, he befriended, he had a close connection with Charles Lamb, Mary Lamb and Samuel Taylor Coleridge, William Wordsworth and John Keats and he had close relationship, close association with these writers. Next, uh, of the writers of the literary criticism, Hazlitt may be taken as representative, yes. Hazlitt is considered to be important uh, a critical expert. Hazlitt, one of the critics during romantic period is Hazlitt. Next, uh, very important and his father was a Unitarian minister he, and uh, their family lived for some time in America. Okay, next uh, and he wanted to become a painter. Next, uh, not required and uh, all this which is not required. Mm. Any particular information with regard to writing consisted of his writing dealt with philosophical, political works, and uh, I, he wanted to write the biography of Napoleon Bonaparte, but he was he wasn't he unfinished. That modern opinion has endorsed contemporary recognitions of Hazlitt's eminence as a critic, so he was recognized as a critic by the modern people. Next. Uh, uh, Nothing, nothing is required, it's enough. Next, some of the important works composed by William Hazlitt. We'll check through. So, an essay on the principles of human action, free thoughts of public affairs, and this is very important, the round table. The round table, this is very important, and le lectures on the Shakespeare's place, this is very important. Lectures on the English poets, and very important these three and very important concept is the round table round table characters of shakespeare's plays very described how how are the characters goes on there is a lot of criticism today we are not going to have questions based on shakespeare but we will have bits on shakespeare 
from other writers. One of the writers is William Hazlitt. Next, uh, lectures on the English comic writers and uh, the spirit of the age, like chiefly on the dramatic literature, some more and uh, some more literary works. Okay. This is something about uh, William Hazlitt and remember this. Next, we will be talking about another important writer of Victorian period is George Eliot. George Eliot, my friends, George Eliot, my friends, and uh, 1819 and 1819 and 1880, and her original name was Mary Ann Evans. She changed her pen, she changed her name in order to have bread and butter to her. In those days, women were not permitted to write literature, but she came out to have living. Next, uh, she was a popular Victorian novelist, translator, journalist, translator, poet, and uh, she. On par with Thomas Hardy Charles Dickens, she also one of the important novelists. And her novels dealt with realist realism. So her novels are realistic novels, social novels, psychological novels, because she talks about the psychological problems of the problems of women. Next, as a translator, editor, and critic. Next, uh, Virginia Woolf described her one of the few English novels written from and grown up for people because when we read A Room of One's Own, a wonderful essay, first 20th century, first feminist essay composed by Virginia Woolf, where she describes all these women starting from Jane Austen. Jane Austen and George Eliot, Anne Bronte, Emily Bronte, Charlotte Bronte, all these writers were greatly admired by Virginia Woolf because women, women, or else. Uh, uh, Virginia Woolf talks about the kind of struggle they might have faced in their life in order to write literature. That's what the feature, the idea, the idea that she uh, highlighted in her essay, Room of One's Own. Next, she was also, and because the popular novel is Middle March, Silas Mariner, Middle March, very popular novel. This is also Gothic novel, and this is described. Next, Martin Hamis also described Julian Barnes described the greatness of uh, what next sorry next she stands at the gateway between between the old novel and the new novel Anwarthi Thackeray and Dickens Hardy and Henry James. Hardy and Henry James, a late Victorian novelist, and Thackeray and Dickens, early Victorian novelist. And she becomes, and these writers like uh, uh, George Eliot, Anna Bronte, Emily Bronte, these writers become mid Victorian writers. That's why she becomes a part of this. She was essentially a novelist of intellectual life because she goes on asking a number of questions to women, to men, to society. She contributed to the English novel novel, an air of sobriety, sternness, seriousness. Her novels are so serious because she asks for individuality, freedom, autonomy and to be away from patriarchal society where families are controlled by male, why not women? The idea of George Eliot. Next, her novels concrete in the presentation of life of the Midland countries of Warwick or Derbyshire, which she had intimately known because she is she is from these countries, these states, and she talks about the conditions of the time, conditions in those uh, places. And as I told you, she describes the things as they are. Hence, her novels are realistic novels. And faithful portrait of life, character known to her hallmarks of great important novels. So, most of the novels of George Eliot are considered to be realistic novels social novels, writers like George Eliot, Jane Austen, Charles Bronte, Anna Bronte, Emily Bronte, Charles Dickens. These writers are considered to be realistic novelists or social novelists because they describe the conditions as they are. Okay. Next, uh, when we talk about 
Next, Hertz. And she talks about her store of experiences. Okay, yes. Which novel deals with what? The themes. Her store of experiences where she had exhausted in Adam Bet. It's a novel. And turned to political, she spoke about the political experiences in the novel Felix Holt. And she spoke about the problems of racial integration in Daniel Deranda novel. Next, presentations of life in Florence during 15th century where she spoke about and Daniel Deranda. Middle March, very important novel my friends. Middle March is going to be one of the major important novels composed by uh, this George, George Eliot. Gothic novel this is, you know. She could, she could hold out a gleam of her former glory for this novel like her earlier work is also faithful picture of the life. This is a faithful picture of life of Midlands or people such as Garth. George Eliot could depict moving incidents, moving incidents which touch the core of her heart. Moving incidents, what do you think the moving incidents to women in particular? You just guess. Next, George Eliot completed work of Wordsworth and pathos of pastoral life, a spirit of measurement, dramatic and this is not required. Next, what are the popular novels composed by uh, George Eliot? Popular novels composed by George Eliot are Adam Bett. Remember AMS, Andhra Maila Sabha, RFMD. Okay. Uh, AMS, RFMD. MD. Where, where, is, where, where did she work as an MD? AMS, RFMD. Like that, have some certain quotes. Adam Bett, first novel. Next, Mill on the Floss, Silas Mariner, Romola, historical novel. Felix Holt, which is also called the Radical, subtitles. Couple of times it was asked. Middle March, this has a subtitle, The Study of Provincial Life. That, that is the uh, subtitle of Middle March, Daniel Derunda. So remember, a AMS RFMD. AMS RFMD. Just have that code, you, can, you will be able to answer any question. Okay. So, this is with regard to Victorian writers, a few Victorian writers. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Venkana English Guru. Okay, and uh, that's all for today. We'll meet uh, again on Monday. Okay, and I'll be sending you a few messages with regard to the timings of the classroom. Is it okay if I take the class in the morning before 8? Okay, that's what I'm thinking of. And be ready if you to attend the classes in the morning also. Right then.